the greatest miracle I ever saw, about 26 miracles. A wonderful story. It's a great story. And, of course, I could repeat it again, and it's good for you to hear. But the greatest miracle, I was on the Phil Donahue show, and he asked me what it was. And I had the privilege of telling Phil Donahue what the greatest miracle was. And this is when I was with Brother Allen. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget, I preached the afternoon service. We called it the faith clinic. Uh, we would try to give them a shot in the arm, so to speak, and preach the word that would get their faith into a place of receiving when they would come through that prayer line at night. We'd give out cards. And when the man of God would lay hands on them, he could discern whether or not faith was high enough to receive because they'd been in the afternoon service and they received the prayer card that gave them the opportunity to be in the prayer line. Well, this little lady came. And she came from Knoxville, Tennessee, right down the road from you, yeah. 400 miles. <laughs> and right. here she brought that son who was approaching four years of age, and he was born with 26 major diseases. Born blind, born deaf, born dumb. His tongue, his tongue hanged out of his mouth, touched the chin, both arms legs deformed, twisted, matted together, elbows touching the knees, and he was in a fetal position. Four years old, born without male organs and born without feet. Complications of every organ in his body. Doctor said he would never live to see his first birthday, but he's approaching four. And I gave that woman a prayer card, but she stayed a week. And this was back in the late 50s, close to 60. And she stayed in a motel for a week. She ate in a restaurant every day. We had three services a day, and she would be in every service. And she would give in every service. That would deplete a bank accounts. And back in those days, the people didn't have checking accounts. They just had the cash, and it was depleted. And I'll never forget, her card was never called for prayer. And she came to me this Sunday afternoon following the afternoon service, and she said, Brother Shambach, I've been here a week, and my prayer card has not been called. Mm. Now, she said, I'm down to my last $20. She said, I've got to get back to Knoxville. This happened in Birmingham, Alabama. And she, she said, I got enough money for gas and enough money for a doctor's appointment tomorrow, $15 for a doctor and $5 for gas. Mm -hmm. Well, $5 in gas today ain't going to get you very far. No. But back in those days, it was 15 cents a gallon. <laughs> and she had enough money to get back, and she had enough money to buy gas. And she said, I have to get back, and he hasn't prayed. She said, do you believe he'll call my card tonight? I said, I don't know. But I'll guarantee you one thing. If he does not call that card, I will personally take that child to the man of God mm. in his trailer house, mm -hmm. and I'll see that he lays hands on her and prays. And she said, you'll do that? I said, I'll do that. So she stayed. Well, I led to singing that night. <laughs> Eat your heart out, song leaders. <laughs> That's the truth, too. I led the singing that night, and I introduced the man of God, and he come bouncing out on that platform. He said, I believe God's going to do something great tonight. I want to get this offering out of the way. And he said, I, tonight, he said, I want everybody to give an offering of faith. And I never heard him use that expression, an offering of faith. And he could see the perplexed look on the faces of the people. Now, he said, if you don't understand what I mean, he said, I want you to give God an offering that you cannot afford to give. Because if you can afford it, there's no faith attached to it. Right. Good answer. There comes back that faith and unbelief again. Mm -hmm. And just as soon as he said that, I saw the woman, the little baby, threw him into the arms of another woman, and she hit the center aisle and ran. Brother Allen was holding the offering buckets, and she threw something in the bucket. Turned around, went back. I was on the platform. I leaped off the platform, and I looked in the bucket, and 
and I saw a twenty dollar bill. Mm -hmm. Now she talked to me earlier that day, and mm -hmm. she's the one who told me all she had was twenty dollars. And I went behind that platform and I wept, Dean, yeah. wept like a baby. I said, "Oh God, I've been trying to preach faith to this woman mm -hmm. for a week." But I said, please, Jesus, give me faith like I've just seen demonstrated. Mm. Well, he started to preach. About 15 minutes into his message, he stopped preaching. He said, I'm being carried away in the Spirit. Now, this is how God would use him, and that's why the cards were never called. And he said, I'm being carried away in the Spirit. And I said, here we go on another trip. <laughs> I said, this woman is here with her baby. She needs a miracle, and he's taking flight. <laughs> and I'm sitting there concerned about the baby. I mean, I, all week long, I've been waiting for this to happen. Did she give it all her money? Yeah. He gave her money. Her money's gone on on the hotel bill, on, on restaurant charges, and then the offering, three services a day. And now she gave her last twenty dollars. She's broke, uh, busted. That's it. No more money. And he's taking a trip. I'm being a carried away in the spirit. And he said, "I'm coming to a big white building." Uh, he said, "It's a hospital." He said, "I'm inside the building. I'm sitting there, my head down, saying, Lord, please heal that boy tonight. I'm praying for the boy." And he's still talking about his trip. And he says, I know I know where I am. He said, I hear all the babies crying. It's the maternity ward. Mm. And he said, I see a little baby was just born. And there's a half a dozen doctors around a, a table where they have the baby. And the baby was born with 12, 16, 18, 20, 26 major diseases. And he, when he said that, I come alive. Yeah. And I said, oh, on my the Lord, tonight is that boy's night. Wow. Uh -huh. Tonight. Here she waited all week. You know, we're living in a fast age. People want it now, 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 now. But this woman waited a week, and she had the patience for it. And he said, the doctor, I hear one of the doctors saying, the baby won't live. <laughs> Excuse me. To see his first birthday, but they're wrong. The baby's approaching four. He said, not only does the boy have 26 major diseases, he has no male organs. He has can another lady's with her, and they're getting in an old Ford. They're on a trip. The baby's in the bassinet. And he said, I see the Tennessee-Alabama border. He said, that car is pulling in on the parking lot. He said, woman, you're here tonight. Bring me your baby now. God is going to give you 26 miracles. Yes. I'll never forget this. She come a running with that baby. And she hit that platform, put him into the arms of Brother Allen. He held the child. I love to tell the story. It didn't happen in my ministry, but I feel like I had a part of it anyway. Sure you did. Huh? And... He was prancing across with that baby in his arms.